So for my senior project, I decided to reset the wall in the climbing gym. I've been climbing for four years. I started just before freshman year. And climbing has taken me places that I never could have dreamed of. I've gone to Red River Gorge, Kentucky, which is known as the mecca of sport climbing because of the tall sandstone walls. I've also taken trips to Waco Tanks, Texas, which is known for its bouldering and a totally different style of climbing. I've also been able to compete in many competitions, including the, all over the Northeast, and I'm currently ranked top 10 in the Northeast Division. Now, climbing isn't just something that you get good at immediately. I, it took four years of grueling effort for me to get to where I am today. A very large factor in climbing is your confidence. It's not easy to be on the thousand foot face of Cannon Cliff and know that the next move, if you fall, you might slip off. Not necessarily that you're going to die, but it's just really, really hard to think. A thousand feet up, all, I'm all right. So climbing involves a lot of that self-control and self-confidence that is needed in everyday life, but specifically in climbing. Climbing has obviously pushed me way far out of my comfort zone. And on occasions, I think it has increased my confidence through those, in, through those situations. My experience through the, of the benefits of climbing and good confidence pushed me to have my senior project be based on that. Climbing is not something you're born good at. Okay, maybe I really liked climbing when I was a kid. But the point is, climbing requires a lot of confidence. Confidence is defined in many ways, but in my research, I like to look at it as one's ability to believe in themselves. Now, one part of confidence that I found really important was motivation. There are two types of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation, according to sports and science, is, states that such behavior is prompted by the satisfaction of three psychological needs, all of which turn out to be social implications, competence, relatedness, and autonomy. So basically, intrinsic motivation is the motivation to do something for the love of doing it. The opposite can be said for extrinsic motivation, which is, which is the motivation to do something for the reward that comes after or to avoid the punishment. This is, all, this is the writing class that every senior is taking this year to avoid so they can kind of graduate. Everyone has a mix of these two motivations and they play a key role in how we look at ourselves and how we perform. Confidence in general also affects how we perform. If an athlete looks, at themselves, looks down upon themselves and has low self-confidence, they might not be able to perform at their peak because they don't look at themselves as good enough. There can, be also, there can also be too much confidence, and this can result in laziness because athletes aren't ready for what's coming to them. Athletes can use many tools to gain their confidence. They have coaches and teammates who provide great resources and are excellent at, at giving guidance. According to coaches like Sidney McNair, my climbing coach and the head root setter at Evil Rapid Fitness, instilling confidence requires knowing your athlete, what they are comfortable doing already, and being able to push them little by little out of their comfort zone. Then, once you have them out of their comfort zone, Encouraging them and showing them even small improvements are good improvements. This is one coach's method of improving confidence, and it stands as a good example of ways coaches keep their athletes confident. My project is based around the same principles explained by Sidney McNair. I'm trying to provide a new tool for students to gain confidence with. For my project, I decided to reset the climbing wall in the mini gym. I started out by going on a job shadow to Evo Rock and Fitness and learning more about the root setting. I took, the, I took two days to do this. The first day, I went and I set a root by myself, with, obviously with help. And then I learned the second day about maintenance and rope work. After that, I started to work on the actual wall in the school. I was lucky enough to have the full support of the maintenance staff in order to get my project done a lot quicker. They provided me with a scissor lift as well as a really nice drill. Um,
I first started by taking bolts off the wall. This was important because all the bolts have been on there for up to 10 years, and it was a very big part because they were all really dirty. After 10 years, I needed, I re they really needed to be cleaned. So I took all the bolts off the wall and I cleaned them out back at the maintenance bay. And from there, I decided to obviously let them dry and then had the fun part, which was putting the holes back on the wall. I started out by laying out all the holes and then putting them on the wall one by one, starting from the top and going down. I kept with the general theme of the wall before, where it starts the hardest on the left and it gets easier as you move to the right of the wall. One of the biggest challenges that I had was my height. Being 6'2 and trying to set roots for people of all heights is very difficult because what I might be able to reach, someone who's five feet tall cannot reach. One thing that I also tried to not do was put all the holds back on the wall. Most of those holds on the wall were there to take up space and you couldn't really follow a specific route because they were all kind of in the way no matter what. So now I took all the holds off and there's spaces in between the roots for climbers to really focus on whichever route they're trying to do. My project was not about just creating something <coughs> entertaining for students to enjoy, but also a play something to get students to try new things and encourage them to get out of their comfort zone. My project not only taught me a lot about myself, but also managing big projects. One big lesson I learned was communication. Now, there, I'm really good at sending emails, but my biggest problem was telling my mom when I needed her to come in because I needed adult supervision to work on the wall. Researching student confidence as well as seeing my own personal climbing experiences made me realize how much my own confidence has grown through rock climbing. And I hope that this project can, will provide students with a new exciting way that could possibly improve their confidence in the future. Thank you. I did a great job of the project. Uh, the wall looks great, but you know, it's a very basic wall. So, two things. Number one, what should we be doing as a staff to um, maintain the wall? And during this process, did you come up with any ideas on how we could expand the wall to make it more challenging or more enjoyable than just pretty much a flat face? So one of the problems is that the wall is up against the cinder block wall behind it. So it'd be really hard to move the wall in different ways. But just setting roots that are not straight, going straight up like a ladder and have more of a flow to them is very important to getting roots to be more enjoyable. Any other questions? I have a question. When you set the roots, you talked about your, the challenge of your height, which knowing that you were doing this presentation this morning, that would have been one of my questions for you. So when you did that, did you have in mind the rating system for yes. climbs as well as the height differentiation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I started, the hardest climb is about 510A, which is not particularly hard, but it's relatively advanced, and it gets easier as you go. So, so what's, the low, what's the level of the... What's the the lowest, lowest climb is probably... I'd say a 5'4", okay. so very, very easy. It's not necessarily ladders, but it's very, a ladder, but it's a very good set of holds. So. Any other questions? 